they have uh, no penalties actually. Uh, they have one 15-yard penalty against them. So here we go now into action again with a third and seven out on the 15-yard line as Coughlin now tries to advance towards the northern goal here at Wilkes-Barre Memorial Stadium. Flanker wide to the right side, and Blom throws the pass to that flanker, which is received, I believe it's Rich Goal, receiving at about the 18-yard uh, line. The receiver was Davenport, Barry Davenport, number 60, completed uh, but about two yards short of a first down as it was completed, completed just about the... Uh, uh, 19 and a half, and it needs to go to about the 21 and a half uh, uh, for the uh, necessary first down. So it's a fourth down, and call it two on the 20. Fourth and two on the 20. Deep man for Kingston, Rack Levage and Richards. And Blom goes back into kicking position uh, for Coughlin, about uh, 12 yards back in scrimmage. Here's a pass, it's a good one. Here's a boot, the red flag on the field. Uh, for the the ball bounces in front of Richards. Richards picks it up at the 40, gives to Rakovic on a reverse. Rakovic still standing at his feet and rolling forward to about the 45-yard line. But there's a red flag, two of them as a matter of fact, way back at the point of origin of that play, which was back at the Coughlin 20. That's at the southern end of the field, the southern 20. Illegal procedure against Coughlin. Illegal procedure against Coughlin. option as to uh, whether there'll be a penalty or whether they'll grab the ball goes to uh, Kingston co-captain Danny Watkins and he's letting Andy Bidden give him a full explanation of every detail the illegal procedure penalty declined by Kingston they'll take possession on their own uh, 45 yard line at the hash mark right side of the field sideliner to the right open field to the left Kingston has Watkins, Uter, Jesse, Rosenbaum, Zaleski, Kapicki, and Surridge on the forward wall. Jack Williams, Jack Jones, Bruce Dietz, and Mike Racklevich in the backfield. We're now starting the second period of the ball game, which in the moment is scoreless. Wing T to the right side. Racklevich straight up the middle. And Racklevich makes a visible yardage as he carries into Coughlin territory, stopped at the Coughlin 46. And it's about, uh, I'd say, a nine-yard gain and one yard short of the first down. So they indicate. That was a nine-yard plunge right through the heart of the line by Reklevich, and he's one yard short of the first. Dietz is, flank, is the wingman to the right side, and here's a try by Reklevich. Oh, this is beautiful deception. Uh, Reklevich acts as a faker, going straight to the heart, and they converge on him. Meantime, Jones uh, bursts off the tackle and makes nice yardage for another first down as he stepped out of bounds on the Coughlin... Eight yard line. This time they spring a du a Dietz Dietz. They give Dietz and they spring him loose from the left side and he makes yardage of about six as he carries to the uh, 31. Second and four on the 31. And this is a, a nice assemblage of running plays by Kingston. Dietz is the wingman right side. Racklevich up the middle and he makes the yardage for the first time. He's still standing on his feet. Straight on to another man and works his way forward for a beautiful run and a first down which carries him to the 17. Four tacklers hit him and he straight on the third man beautifully and the fourth man finally got him on the pin down after his forward momentum of the straight arm almost had carried him to the ground. And that was a burst of power upon the part of Mike Raklevich as he carried to the 17-yard line. And this, of course, is the deepest penetration of the morning. It's 0-0 with 9 minutes and 50 seconds to go here in the first half. Time out on the field. Here's Don Paul. Deemers, 6 West Market Street, next to the Miner's Bank in Wilkesbury, is stocked to the rafters with new, delightful, and useful gifts for each person on your Christmas list. Delight the kiddies and adults with games from Deemers, or surprise the student in your family with a world globe, a book bag, or a portable typewriter. 
holiday party goods of all kinds are available at Deemers. And you'll love the different holiday designs of Rust Craft and Norcross gift wrapping paper and the huge selection of Christmas cards. Put Deemers on your Christmas shopping list. There's always friendly, personal attention to your desires. At Deemers, your Christmas store, 6 West Market Street, next to the Miners Bank in Wilkesbury. They're open evenings until 9 o'clock. Offensively, the Kingstonians will be starting from the Coughlin 17, and that's as deep as either club has been this morning. The other penetration was to the uh, Coughlin 18, where Kingston lost possession. First and 10 on the 17-yard line. With Watkins, Uter, Jesse, Rosenbaum, Zaleski, Kopicki, and Surridge on the line. Williams, Jones, Dietz, and Recklevage in the backfield for Kingston. With uh, uh, Lonesome End left side, and otherwise a standard tree, Recklevage uh, goes up the middle as the paper, and the ball then is given to Jones. And Jones blasts his way off the tackle on the right side for another first down. And they're inside the five. They're at about the three-yard line. And goal to go. And that is first down, number six of the morning for the Kingstonians. And apparently there is a burst of power which the, Coughlin, which the Kingston Club is showing is going to be tough for Coughlin to stop. Here's a play, Rack Leverage through the... It's six to nothing. With nine minutes and 19 seconds to go in this period, the first score of the ball game as Reklevich went over for the touchdown from the two-yard line, six to nothing. They have used Reklevich both as the hard runner through the heart of the line and also to feint in that direction and then exploding either Dietz or Jones, the halfbacks, off to the side. Here's the attempted extra point. It will be by placement. Ball is in position, and the kick by Dietz is over and good, and it's 7 to nothing. The ball held for placement by Williams, the kick by Dietz. And so it's Kingston 7, Coughlin nothing, with 9 minutes and 19 seconds of playing time to go here in the first half of this traditional Thanksgiving Day game between Kingston High and Coughlin of Wilkes-Barre at the... Uh, Brooksbury Memorial Stadium. Seven to nothing right now with uh, nine minutes and 19 seconds of playing time to go. So Kingston will be booting the ball from the Northern 40. The Coughlin Club will line up back to the 50 with their deepest men probably near the 10. They haven't set the formation just yet. And will bring the ball up from the Southern goal line here at Brooksbury Memorial Stadium adjacent to Myers High School. And as we speak of the Memorial Stadium, we note that the flag here is at half staff in tribute to the late assassinated president of the United States, John F. Kennedy. I would note too that the crowd, although a good one, is not nearly so great as we have been accustomed to seeing on Thanksgiving mornings when Kingston and Coughlin had clapped. Of course, there is no championship riding on this as uh, Kingston has it much their own way. In the conference, that is. Certainly not in this ball game at the moment. They're ahead 7 to nothing right now, but it's been a good ball game and Coughlin has been in their pitching. First uh, restrainers, five men back of the 50. Three men right back of the 40. Deepest men are standing back on their own ten. The kickoff is to be by Jack Williams of Kingston on the kicking tee. It's high, end over end. Received by Lazarski at the 10, out to the 15, to the 20, to the right side, and still in a speed of about the 22. And withstanding the first tackler, but not being able to take the surge of three more tacklers against him with 61, John Zaleski, and number 80 of the Kingston Club being particularly in there on the tackle which pulled the boy down. The uh, second of those tacklers was Larry Rosenbaum. They start from the 22, the Coughlinites. Make that the 27. Make it the 27 as I take advantage of the site now, looking into the sun, by the way, and there's a nice bright sun here. The flip back to Lazarski. Lazarski nailed back to the scrimmage line, and the whistle is through as he evades one or two tacklers 
after the whistle had blown, however, uh, he made much more yardage. Uh, his tackler, uh, Bob Surridge, had him by one leg and had restrained his forward motion to the point that the referee finally blew the whistle. And just then, Lazarski was able to break loose of the grasp and made an additional 10 or 12 yards. And it is uh, not understood by some of the fans that the whistle had shrilled and the boys' forward motion really had been stopped for a sufficiently long period of time to make it the down at about the 24-yard line where it is uh, uh, 12 yards back of scrimmage. A roll out to Lou Blom to the right side. Lou Blom making nice yardage. Turns the corner and goes out of bounds on the far side of the field at about the 13. 37, 38 yard line. And that was a beautiful run by Blom. Enough for a first down for the Coffinites, which makes it, I believe, their fourth of the morning. It's at the 39, first down for Coffin. A little closer to the right sideline. Lazarski flanked left in the open acreage. Blom calling the signals from a tee. Blom bobbles the ball and falls on it himself, retaining, I believe, possession, even though the Kingstonians were submarining in on him, uh, with Rosenbaum particularly making a noble effort to try to get the ball. He's a linebacker on the right side. So that's uh, stopped at the point of scrimmage, actually about a yard back of it, so call it second and 11 on about the 37-38. Again, closer to the right sideline strike. Wing T, wing is to the left side. And he's in motion to the right and gets the handoff from, uh, that's Hitch, getting the handoff from Blom and exploding through the tackle guard slot after getting possession with his forward propulsion and motion and carrying it out past the 40 to about the 42-yard line where it will be third and six on the 42. It's 7-0, Kingston leading Coughlin with 6 minutes and 50 seconds to go here in the first half of the ball game. Gritschko is flanked to the left side, and it's a flanker pass developing. No, he runs over the other. No, before Blom can get rid of the ball, it, there was no question in my mind that this was a pass play. There is very little question that Gritschko was a potential receiver. We thought it was going to be a flanker pass, but then we saw that he was moving in motion uh, into the interior, and it was supposed to be a spot pass uh, over the line of scrimmage, but uh, Blom by that time went down under a swarm of jerseys, and he never did get a pass off. So it lost yardage and pulls the ball play back to the 37-yard uh, line, and this is fourth and about 13 and a punting situation. Blom goes back to punt. Here's a snap from center. Here's his boot high into the air. Wobbling and received at the 30-yard line by Rex Leverick, who attempts to hand off to Richards, and Richards could not gain possession, and Coughlin, Coughlin took over. Rex Leverick attempted to hand off to his backfield mate, Richards. Richards could not gain possession. The ball bounced to the turf and was received on the attempted handoff. It bounced to the turf, and Coughlin got it on the 22. This is a break in the ball game as Rakovic getting the ball on the punt at the 30, attempted to hand it off to Richards, and Richards couldn't gain possession. There was no handle there, and the ball bounded to the turf. Coffin recovered at the Kingston 22, and this is the deepest Coffin can face in the morning. They come up with a shotgun formation, and back of the scrimmage line and tailback is Blon. Blon runs to the left side, and he's going to continue the run as he gets inside the 20-yard uh, line, stopped at the 19 for a gain of about three, and a red flag on the field in fraction of rules. The uh, coffin evidently was the offending team on a clip from the signal from the field. And so there undoubtedly it will be a 15-yard penalty against the Coughlinites, which may uh, take the steam out of the potential offensive which they had brewing here after getting the break in the ball game on the fumble by Kingston and the recovery by Coughlin. Here's Billing for referee. Carrying the ball for 
his 15. Second down. And placing it out on the 34. Where it's first and about 23. Second. Second down and about 23. Ball on the 34. A referee's whistle because it, there's a question as to whether this is a first down situation or a second down situation. And Coach Joe Moran is vehemently saying from the sideline that it should be a first down situation. However, they indicate that according to the rules, this is a second down situation. Second and 23. From the 34-yard line, at the hash mark, left side of the play. Flanker to the right side, the offensive formation. Blom going back, Blom's going to pass, Blom cuts his arm, he passes it to the second, at the 25, up to the 30, to the 35, at the 40, at the 45, and going out of bounds, at about the 47-yard line, for the interception by Mike Clark. The pass was intercepted by Mike Clark, number 22. And that's the second interception in the morning by Kingston of a Coughlin pass. Coughlin has gone to the air now upon six occasions of which two have been completed and two intercepted. First and 10 for Kingston on their own 47-yard line. Wing T, wing being to the right side, straight at the middle. Reklovich carries past the 50-yard line, stopped at about the Coughlin 48-49 as the forward wall with Everett and Sweeney and Michaels all in on the tackle made the stop at the 49, says the referee. That's the Coughlin 49. Wing T, wing to the right side, and a back in motion, moving toward the right is Jones, and Jones goes inside the tackle, and is stopped by the secondary of Coughlin, as he gets past the 45, stopped at about the 43, and it was Pachotti and Slabinski on the tackle for the Coughlinites. It is uh, still 7 to nothing, you know, Kingston leading Coughlin with uh, 4 minutes and 21 seconds of playing time to go here in the first half of the ball game. Time out for measurement. They bring the chain gang out, and the ball, ball is placed in position. The measurement is being made. Any part of the ball being over will make it a first down, but it is apparently short by, I would say, a uh, foot. down and about a foot to go on the uh, Coughlin 44. They use Reklevich and I think his forward propulsion gave them the first down. They so signal it is a seventh of the morning unofficially for Kingston and the play wound up on the Coughlin 42. Les Leask is back in the ball game. Richard Jesse to the sidelines. Uh, this is the alternate combination which uh, Coach Fennell uses when he wants to send plays in. Wing to the left side. That wing is in motion. The play bursts to the right side with the ball carried by Reklovich past the 40-yard line, stopped at about the 38-39. The tacklers included Nano Pachotti using his 155-odd uh, pounds to uh, bottle up the, uh, the hole there. And also in on the tackle were a couple of other Coughlin boys, notably gentleman wearing uniform number 77. We'll try to find out who he is in a moment. Here's the play. Jones wide to the right side. Inside the sideline stripes. He makes nice yardage and is stopped as he gets to about the 25-yard line uh, by a shoulder-high tackle by the Coughlin defenders coming in from the tertiary to bring him down. In other words, a safety man had to move up to make the tackle to prevent the boy from going all the way along the sidelines. That's the eighth first down of the morning for Kingston and places the ball on the Coughlin 25. Here is Rakovic going through the heart, but the ball instead is handled by Dietz, who tries to go off the tackle left side, and he stopped at just about the point of scrimmage. No perceptible gain, and leading the tacklers for Coughlin in that instance uh, was uh, number six. 70. Who is Joe Michaels? One back in motion, moving to the right side. The give is to uh, Rakovic. 
That coverage bursts off the right tackle on the right side, and he makes about four as he carries to the 21. Tachati making the tackle. Lazarski number 43 and Pachotti number 45 in to help stop the boy. Third down and about seven to go on the 21. Back in motion to the left. The give, the keeper play with the quarterback Williams beautifully faking a handoff to Rack Leverage and instead carrying to a ball inside the 20. Stopped at about the 16 yard line and a red flag on the field and the infraction of rules this time was by Kingston. And there will be a penalty to erase uh, this offensive that uh, Kingston again has unleashed with a minute and 56 seconds to go in the first half of the ball game and Kingston leading Coughlin, a very stubborn Coughlin this morning by a score of seven to nothing. The penalty is for 15 against Kingston and carries the play back out to the 37 yard line. That makes it third and 22 for Kingston on the 37. That's the Coughlin 37. The left end split by about uh, eight yards. Pass play developing. Williams throws a long bomb. Dietz cannot get it. In fact, Dietz might have been in the clear, but leaping up to make a beautiful uh, defensive stop was Lou Blom, and he almost intercepted. He almost gained actual possession of the ball. Kingston has gone to the air twice this morning. They've completed neither of their tosses, and each was the same combination. The thrower was Williams. The potential receiver was Bruce Dietz. And Dietz, by the way, works his pattern well. He was down where he should have been, and the pass this time was a good one. But Blom, who was a tall lad, really used his height to good advantage. He's six feet one, and he leaped into the air to almost intercept, and certainly to stop that play from being a touchdown play. Kingston going to boot it. Racklevage is a kicker, aiming for the coffin corner to the left side, and it is... No, he doesn't make the coffin corner, but it's going inside, deep inside, and close to the goal line. At about the one, it is down by number 5-4 of the Kingstonians, who was very alert. Dan Watkins, very alert. He let the ball roll almost to the end zone. He stopped it at the one-yard line, and that's where Coughlin takes over. That was a nice play by Dan Watkins, the left end of the Kingston clock. He still stays in there at that same position as Kingston goes on the defensive. It's Watkins, Uter, Payer, Serridge, and Jesse on the forward wall. For Coughlin, it is uh, flankers left and right. And a keeper by Lou Blom stopped at the scrimmage line as the forward wall of Kingston. Payer, Rosenbaum, and Kapiti particularly put the blitz on him and stopped him at the scrimmage line. No perceptible gain on the play, so call it still second down and 10 to go. We've got less than a minute to go in this uh, uh, first half of the ball game. The clock now says 46 seconds, and it's 7 to nothing. Coughlin is just going to try to eke out the time, I imagine. Again, it's Blom on the keep, and Blom this time worked the ball out to about the two, two and a half yard line, and I think they're going to eat out the clock all right because it's 33 seconds to go, 31 now, and 30 as each of these plays takes its measure of time. And it's third down now, third down, and about eight yards to go out on the three-yard line. Third and eight out on the three-yard line. 18 seconds. Now to the scrimmage line. Blom will probably keep. Blom does keep, and Blom sturdily hangs onto the ball, works it out to the four-yard line, and the clock says four seconds, three, two, one, and the half is over. At the end of the first half, the score is Kingston seven, Coughlin nothing. From Charles H. Long of Sweet Valley Golf Distributor and your local golf dealer, a great new economy-priced winner.